Hey, what's up? It's Laser Lemon, and today we're talking about gem cutting. Now, I don't have my faceting machine yet, but what I do have is the Faceters Toolkit from Magus Gems. And today, we're going to take a closer look at what's inside. Let's do it. If you're not familiar with Magus Gems, I'll put their link first in the description. It was started by Justin K. Prim and Victoria Ray Node, who described themselves as a gem cutting power couple. Since starting Magus Gems, Justin also started Faceting Apprentice, which is a collection of online courses aimed at teaching the craft of gem cutting. And on Magus Gems, they sell the Faceters Toolkit to accompany those online courses. Now I've purchased and watched my first course from Faceting Apprentice, but like I said, I don't have my faceting machine yet, so I couldn't follow along. But I have had this Faceters Toolkit, and I've been really anxious to take a look at what's inside. The Faceters Toolkit itself costs $375, and because Victoria and Justin are situated in Bangkok, it also costs $90 to ship it to the United States. So as we go through the toolkit, I'll be keeping an eye on value. Would I have been better off buying all of these things separately instead of in the kit? I don't know, but let's take a look and we'll see. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to take you through each item in the Faceters Toolkit one by one, and as I do, I'm going to put the best price I can find online for that item, or something equivalent, right up here in the corner. So without further ado, let's get started. What we're looking at here is oil. Specifically, it's sewing machine oil. And this is used to make a diamond slurry. So this oil is mixed with a very fine diamond powder to make kind of a gooey mess that you use to charge a lap. And a lap is basically a very fine grinding wheel that's used to remove material from rough stone. You can see this bottle has a very uh, narrow, precise kind of spout but I don't think we need that precision. I think we'll just be mixing that with the diamond slurry. You can see that the writing on this bottle is all in Thai. And because of that, I can't really tell how much is in this bottle because I don't speak or read Thai. It's written in Thai because Justin lives in Bangkok and this was put together and shipped from Bangkok. But when you look on Amazon, you see that a small bottle of Singer sewing machine oil is $7.29. This is a bottle of Loctite 480. If you're not familiar with Loctite, it is a, an adhesive that you can use to put on the threads of a, a screw or a bolt. And when it dries, it prevents that screw or bolt from easily coming undone or, or, or getting loose. If you've ever put together furniture or a bike and you've seen some blue on the end of a screw, that's what this is, it's Loctite. For our purposes, we'll be using this as a sort of super glue when we are mounting a gemstone to our DOP. Sometimes we will use Loctite as a super glue to make sure that that gem is securely fastened to the top and won't come undone. This is a felt lap. Now most laps are made out of metal and have some kind of abrasive either built into them or they're a smooth metal that can be charged with some sort of abrasive slurry. But this is a soft lap that's used for very fine polishing uh, my understanding is you would use a lap like this to polish the girdle of a gem, which is kind of the outside rim. I don't quite understand fully how a felt lap can really remove any material from a gemstone, but my assumption is that you, you also charge this with some sort of slurry, either an oxide slurry or a diamond slurry. I was surprised by how hard this was. When I heard a felt lap, I thought this would be rather soft, but as you can see, squeezing it, it doesn't give very much. It's, it's a pretty firm.
firm material. You can't really find an equivalent for a felt lap somewhere like Amazon. It's a specialty item that you have to order from a lapidary supply store. There's nothing fancy about this. This is just a glass jar with a locking lid. It also comes with a, I don't know if it's silicone or rubber, but it comes with a gasket so that the seal is airtight. This is, I believe, intended to store acetone. Acetone is used for cleanup. We use two different adhesives to dop our stones, and that would be the red wax and the blue Loctite. And I believe acetone is the solvent of choice to clean up both of those adhesives. So we need somewhere secure to store it. There's no shortage of locking jars to be found on Amazon. Although in this size, they're not quite as common. To find a small jar like this, you might find a two pack for $12. Uh, it's easy to find cheaper jars, but they're generally larger. There's no reason a larger jar wouldn't work, but I imagine it's nice to have something compact. This is a small tin for storing diamond slurry once mixed. Uh, the diamond powder mixed with the Singer oil. We received two of these in the Faceter's Toolkit. One for the finer diamond powder and one for the more coarse. You can also find these on Amazon. They're typically sold as lip balm tins for people who make homemade lip balm. We received two of these. You can usually find them in a 12 pack or higher for around 50 cents a piece. This is a bag of bags. These are gem bags. They're small Ziploc bags with very specific label spaces on them that are well suited for storing gems. I wasn't able to find an exact product like this it listed the grade and the shape, etc. But you are able to find small Ziploc bags like this with a generic white label where you could write these things in yourself. I was able to find two inch by two inch bags that are a little bit bigger than this. And I found a thousand of them for $12. So these are relatively inexpensive. If I had to guess, I would say there are a hundred here. This is diamond powder. And it comes in two sizes. These are grit sizes. One says zero to one, and one says zero to five. And that's a measurement in microns. This is very fine diamond powder, and this is mixed with the Singer oil to make a diamond slurry. This is from Sachi Gems, which is based in Bangkok. These small jars of diamond powder only cost $3 a piece on Sachi's website, but you will pay for shipping from the US to get these from Bangkok. The weight of these jars is measured in carats. There are five carats to one gram. You can find diamond powder for polishing sold on Amazon by the gram in plenty of different grits. But this is one area that I would be a little hesitant to buy something from Amazon. I'd rather go with a known high quality brand because the quality of this product will directly affect the quality of the gem you cut. This is red dopping wax. 
There are several kinds of dopping wax, the major difference being the temperature at which they melt. You can hear from this wax that it's very hard. It has a glass kind of ting when you touch it. It feels like a very hard plastic. There's no give or bend. It's hard to imagine this actually melts. This red dopping wax is used to attach a rough gemstone to your dop stick securely so it won't fall off. It serves the same purpose as the blue Loctite. You can find dopping wax on Amazon, but I don't know what brand to trust, and I wish I could tell you what brand of dopping wax this is. I would feel more comfortable getting my dopping wax from an actual lapidary supplier rather than through Amazon. This is a cutting board, at least I think. It's not really a butcher block style cutting board, but it is a solid piece of wood. And I believe the intention is to use it as a dopping station. This is where we'd either melt the wax or use the Loctite to attach the rough gemstone to the dop. It has this hook, I'm not exactly sure why, maybe to hang it on the wall. But if this is used as a permanent station that you'd have dopping equipment on, I can't imagine you'd actually want to hang it up. As you can imagine, there are plenty of alternatives on Amazon. There's a two pack of bamboo cutting boards that are about the same size, and that goes for $6. But you might also want to consider something like a stainless steel tray. These are the disassembled parts to a lap stand. This is a simple stand that is meant to hold your different laps. This isn't super important. You could stack these laps on top of each other, but you might want to avoid the abrasive laps rubbing against each other. So this is just a convenience for storage of laps. I'm not gonna take the time to assemble this right now, but I wanted to show you what it's intended for. You could come up with other ways to store your laps. I think as long as they are separated from each other so they're not rubbing or banging into each other, you don't want them to scratch or to bend or warp. While you won't find a lap stand on Amazon, the closest equivalent I can think of is a desktop file organizer. And I'll link one or two of those in the description. You can find them for 10 or $15. Or you could find a wall mounted one and that might free up some of your bench space. Now this is fun, this is a jeweler's loop but not just any jeweler's loop. First, it has this fancy leather case. And when you open it up, it's from Gemax. This is a brand that's popular, at least popular with Justin. But this is a loop gauge. And that means when you look through it, there is a tiny measuring device on the lens but it allows you to look at something very close up. It's meant to be placed on the object. So you could put this on a piece of paper and measure very precisely the width of a letter or um, in our case, the width of a gem facet. Let's take a closer look. These are fancy tweezers. As you can imagine, when you're working with gems, you have the need to pick up very small items. And these tweezers fit the bill. They come to a very fine point 
so you can pick up very small items very precisely. These ones have a kind of serrated, I guess you could say, grippy tip. This next set of tweezers is interesting because it doesn't start open. I would call this a normally closed set of tweezers. You kind of have to pry them apart. I imagine that's why we have two sets of tweezers in the fastening toolkit. So I think you could put a small stone in here and it would be held without you providing any force on the tweezers. Going through Justin's course, I also noticed that he uses this set of tweezers when he's stopping. He uses the broad, flat end of the tweezers to roll his hot wax to make it smooth and flat. On Amazon, you can find a three pack of gem tools, including two pairs of tweezers, and a stone grabber that has four prongs that will reach out and grab small stones. A three pack like that will run you $10. This is a set of digital calipers. This is used to measure the size of a gemstone and can help in planning how you might cut that stone. It comes with an extra battery. This set of calipers comes from Gemax again. And you can find similar digital calipers on Amazon anywhere between $20 and $30. That's the most common pricing. This specific set of calipers is also between $20 and $30 depending on where you find it. You can also find other popular Amazon picks that go as high as $100 to $150, although I don't know what the advantage would be. They can measure both the inside and outside. These calipers have the ability to switch between millimeters and inches for measurement. They have an all metal construction, which isn't a given for digital calipers. You can find many online that are splash proof. I don't know if this set is splash proof, but that is a handy addition. This is a standard 10x jeweler's loop by Belomo. I'm not exactly sure what triplet means or if that's just their brand name for this jeweler's loop. You would expect that Justin would include a Gemax jeweler's loop in this Faceter's toolkit. He seems to be a fan of the brand, but he swears by these Belomo jeweler's loops that they're the best. They have good magnification, they're compact, and he says that they don't distort the image. One problem with some jeweler's loops is that the image gets distorted around the edges of the lens. And here you can see just how close we can get to looking at our gemstones.
couldn't find this specific loop on Amazon, but you can buy it from the Belomo store for around $39 and free shipping. I'll put a link below. This is a digital scale from, you guessed it, Chemex. So this is helpful for weighing out gemstones, rough stones, but more importantly, weighing out finished stones. You can measure how much your finished stone weighs in carats. I believe this scale was supposed to come with a calibration weight, which is a piece of metal of a known specific weight. And you can use that to calibrate your machine. But I did not see a calibration weight in the box. Only batteries. So let's turn this on. These are very finely tuned scales, meant for weighing small things like gems. Much different than something like a kitchen scale. I didn't find this specific scale on Amazon, but I was able to find it on Saatchi Tools in Bangkok and it cost about $20. Of course, you'll have to pay shipping. Its capacity is 200 grams with a precision of 0.01 grams, which is 1 20th of a carat. This is an alcohol lamp. This is used in the dopping process. You light the alcohol lamp and you use it to heat up the wax. The wax slowly begins to melt and you can form it and melt your rough stone into it. The wicks loop through this ceramic tip and hang down into the reservoir. After you're done using the alcohol lamp, you simply put the metal cap over the top and the flame goes out. This is a small spray bottle for cleaning. I forget what Justin puts in it, acetone or alcohol? But there's really not a lot to say about it. There are plenty of these on Amazon, and they're not very expensive. These are topper laps. These are metal laps, meant to be used in conjunction with a master lap. Faceting machines come with a, a nice chunky metal lap. These topper laps are very thin, as you can see, and they sit on top of the master lap, and the master lap supports it. So they don't have to be very thick. They don't have to support a lot of pressure. The master lap supports the pressure. The job of the topper lap is just to provide the abrasive surface. These laps are pre-charged with a certain grit of diamond powder. The first we saw was a 1200 grit, which is the finest. This one is a 600. This is a 320 grit, which is the coarsest grit of these three, and when used on a rough stone, would remove the most material the fastest. 
The first two we saw were Saatchi brand, and this is a WJT, which I hadn't heard of. And these are all pre-polishing grits. That means they're primarily meant to remove material from the rough stone. Not included in the Faceter's Toolkit are the polishing laps. Polishing laps are much finer grits, and sometimes they're charged with a diamond slurry instead of having the grit built into the lap. Because topper laps are thin and don't require a lot of stability, they're generally less expensive. On Saatchi Tools, you can get a 1200, a 600, and a 300 grit topper lap for $10.50 a piece, plus shipping. Now this isn't the best camera angle for this light, but this is the Gemax ILED Daylight Lamp Pro 1. And on Gemax Tools, you can buy one for $95. It's a dimmable light with, I think, 10 steps it does not change colors. It has a fairly cool light, I would guess about 5,000 Kelvin, more of a daylight color. The product description says this is an 80 CRI light. That's a scale between 0 and 100 that describes how faithfully this light reproduces colors. 80 is not great, but it's not the worst. You'll see more of this light once I set up my gem cutting station. So there you have it. That's the Faceter's Toolkit 2.0 from Magus Gems. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough and found it useful. But before I go, is the Faceter's Toolkit worth it? Well, when all is said and done, it would have cost me $418 plus shipping to buy all these things separately. Not to mention, I would have had to know what to buy in the first place in order to take my online gem cutting courses. And shipping isn't trivial either. Places like Gemmax and Saatchi don't have free shipping or even flat shipping rates. You have to request a shipping quote before you place your order. So knowing all this, would I buy the Faster's Toolkit 2.0 again? Absolutely. The price recently increased to $400 from the $375 that I paid, but I would still buy it again in a heartbeat. Sadly, it is sold out again as of this recording, so if it doesn't become available again soon, I hope that this walkthrough and the links in the description help you build your very own Faceter's Toolkit. Stay tuned for more gem cutting videos as I continue to set up my equipment and get started. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.